I think this is a really good example of a difficult figure that's controversial that people bring up to me a lot and you interviewed twice, which is Curtis Yarvin. Yeah, Manchester Smallbug. Manchester Small, AKA Manchester Smallbug, which is his pseudonym that he goes by in his his, his blog. Can you tell me about who he is? Sure. Why is he interesting? What of his ideas are interesting? Well, briefly, he invented the concept of the red pill. So Curtis, Manchester Smallbug had a blog called Unqualified Reservations. You can still find it online. It's very verbose. He writes at length, very, very bright. Um, His perspective is very heretical. So a lot of things that we take for granted in our liberal democracy, uh, he regards as not only incorrect, which is downright absurd, and does not, he does not take what many people view as the basis of American political discourse as the basis for his thought. So when you're starting with someone who is basically repudiating uh, kind of the Western worldview, or not the Western worldview, like the American milieu, uh, a lot of people are going to, of course, regard him as dangerous or uh, someone who is verboten. Um, He's a very bright person. Um, Why is he such a toxic figure? Because if you are blue-pilled, if you are the guardians of what is acceptable discourse, then you have to make sure your forts are secured and that any figure outside of this acceptable discourse has to be marginalized and regarded as radioactive as possible. You don't want to let in these kind of uh, um, ideas that would be destructive to your hegemony. Well, so let's dig into it. So like he, I've read a few things by him, but then I hear that in a, b- a bunch of places, him being called a racist, a white supremacist, yeah. neo-fascist, so on. I go to his Wikipedia. Yeah, there's a view on race section. Let me let me read it. Okay, Yarvin's opinions have been described as racist, with his writings interpreted as supportive of slavery, including the belief that whites have higher IQs than blacks for genetic reasons. Yarvin himself maintains that he's not a racist because while he doubts that, quote, all races are equally smart, the notion, quote, that people who score higher on IQ tests are in some sense superior human beings is, quote, creepy. He also disputes being an outspoken advocate for slavery, though he has argued that some races are more suited for slavery than others. Quote, it should be obvious that although I'm not a white white nationalist, I am not exactly allergic to the stuff. Yarvin wrote in a post that linked approvingly of, I don't know these people, Steve Saylor. Steve Saylor, yeah, he's from- Jared yeah, Taylor and yeah. other racialists. Yeah, so- Okay, so like, m- m- one of my questions is-, is can I, Let me just say yeah. one sentence. Yes. In the same way that you had, you mentioned that guy earlier who was defending some aspects of communism, and that is, in some contexts acceptable, but when you think about it, it's like, this should be radioactive. Right. The fact that he is engaging with these ideas uh, in anything other than this has to be repudiated at all costs is what renders him to a large extent a racist. That's really interesting. I mean, so there are some topics you can be- Nuanced. Nuanced and some not. And communism is still a topic that you can be nuanced about. Right. It's difficult, but you can be. Uh, race and this, like talking about slavery and IQ differences based on race, is a topic that I guess is radioactive to a degree where you can't even say anything, even if it's like nuanced or it, not even like making a point. It's like touching it as, right. as you make another point. And understandably, because you can understand that I'm going to steel man the, the, their point because you can understand the point. It's like you're just talking about Hitler. Once this foot gets in the door that some people are inherently slaves or some people are inherently better than others, it really quickly, you know, collapses. So that would be their perspective. But that's what, like, if I were to give criticism of his... But let me just say one more thing. Racist is also used to describe Alex Jones. Alex doesn't talk about race. Racist is a shorthand for a certain percentage of the population to let you know 
do not bother investigating this person any further. Yeah, They're so off limits. Uh, definitely, racism and sexism is a thing that's now used to shut down conversation that's quite absurd uh, by, by a small percent of the population. But Jared Taylor and Steve Saylor, Jared Taylor interviewed him for my book, he would be regarded in any sense as a racist. What's the difference between racist and racialist? So racialists, I mean, this is splitting hairs and now I'm gonna be all radioactive. Jared Taylor runs something called Amren, and this is, I mean, his perspective is that there are inherent differences between the races and you cannot live side by side uh, um, well. Whites and blacks yeah. should not be living uh, side by and side. And by the way, for people who don't know, this is out of context that you have uh, written a great book that includes some of these concepts called the new right, which is not includes these concepts, but talks Doesn't about, include, yeah. well, it's more about the growth of the, com the community uh, around the, 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 the alt-right and all those kinds of, the world. Right. Is, is, so, and his point about IQ, it's like if you had a population, the Dutch, right? I think they're the tallest pe people on earth. And if you said, well, the Dutch are the best people on earth, why? Because they're the tallest. It's like you're a crazy person. So, if someone is scoring low, an, an individual on an IQ test, that means they're somehow a lower quality person. Well, maybe in one very specific aspect, but I mean, if they're a good human being, I've got friends who are low IQ. All my friends are low IQ, frankly, compared to me. Sound like Trump there for That's a second. That's how you choose friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have any other choices. No one's yeah. gonna be at my level. Well, so you're, the, you're the smartest person since Abraham Lincoln that I've, <laughs> that I've ever seen. And unlike him, I actually am honest. Yeah. So, so he <laughs> is someone who very much swims in heretical ideas. Aristotle, here's another thing. Like if you bring up that Aristotle said that some people are born to be slaves, he wasn't speaking about race. He just meant people's souls. H.L. Mencken, who's a great um, heretic and, and uh, uh, early 20th century figure, uh, one of his quotes that I say all the time, which people have seen a lot in this past year, that the average man does not want to be free. He merely wants to be safe. That I think is, I don't know, what, I am not familiar uh, with what Mulbug saying about slavery, because his writing is ponderous, but that certainly is something I think that is undeniable. That I think more people are realizing there's a large percent of the population that is actively disinterested in freedom and the more responsibilities it entails. Well, I mean, really, just the word slavery. If you want to make some kind of point or even think about the topic outside the context of this is a horrible thing that happened in the United States history. And other countries' history, it's and not other, unique to us, yes, let's be clear. This is, I mean, very important and there's slavery going on today. And then yeah. a lot of people argue that uh, uh, sex trafficking and all those kinds of yeah. things. I mean, there's there's a, atrocities going on today that, you know, the, uh, talking about it in a way that's not immediately saying this is the most horrible thing that happened ever. You know, it's something I think about a lot is like, if I wanna say something controversial, I should do so with skill, with care, and only about things I care about. Well, here's where I would disagree. I not I, When I say things, I often say things that are controversial, or <clears throat> I will say uncontroversial things in a controversial th way, because it's a useful mechanism to alienate people you don't want around you. Because if there are people who are going to be shocked by certain topics, like we shouldn't have ended World War II. Like even as a hypothesis, they just clutch their pearls. They're like, oh, you want the Holocaust to happen. I can't discuss most things with you because you're not interested in having a conversation. You're interested in your emotional response. See, I think I see things differently. Maybe this is a bit of a devil's advocate, but what in at least the modern discourse of like Twitter and social media and so on, I find that if you do that, you're not actually uh, removing the people that are not thoughtful and kind and so on, you're actually attracting loud people. Like a small number of them, they come over and start yelling at you. Start yelling, they're basically ruin the party by showing up and just screaming. And so all the thoughtful people leave. Well, that's why I, you have to be a very heavy blocker. You have yeah. to block people on Twitter because you have to cultivate your audience and have them, like a lot of times people come at me, I don't care then they'll start attacking members of my audience. And then I'm like, dang, I got to block them because they've won this one, because I can't have that. Yeah, I don't know. I un Unnecessarily provoking people feels... Um... It's, 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 you, this is beta testing. You try to break the system and see what works. You put up as much pressure as possible. This is very much computer stuff that you should be able to appreciate. 
Point being, when you have a program, you're trying to intentionally sit there and, and do the, as many mistakes to see what go wrong, right? Is that not common yeah, yeah, practice? Exactly. Yeah. So you're saying that's, that's a way to see communication with the world is you say something uncontroversial in a controversial way and that blocks people. That or or it, does it trigger them? Do they roll their eyes? What, you know, what is gonna be their emotional response? Are they gonna start yelling? The, the problem is the, the, the reason I can't think like this or I can't because I'm not sure about the points I'm trying to make uh, always like okay. I'm not always 100% sure that I'm right about things like so I'm, I'm in being thoughtful I'm afraid that I'll turn off with, with an ineloquently phrased or even incorrect statement I will do damage that can't be undone in terms of a good, having a good conversation about a topic. So I wanna be very careful about like, I'm not saying afraid, fear is not what I'm talking about. I think fear is is uh, like not saying something out of fear is at the core of the many of the problems of the world today. But I'm just saying, be say stuff with care. If I'm going to touch race as a topic, it feels like you really should be deeply, first, have a point to make, like you really care about a point you wanna make. And second, think deeply about how to say that point in a way that communicates it the best. And and touching, I would say, uh, t listen, I've, I've uh, on your show, which is which is great, I mean, I'd like to say thank you for having Mencius Mopa. You Curtis. are welcome. <laughs> that's the, uh, that's the name of the show. Uh, so thank you for having me a couple of times. It's it's great to sort of get him to, in this loose way, to, to talk about different kinds of stuff. But I don't think we talked about race at all. So no, 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 no. No, but I'm just bringing it back to what you were asking, which is if you read the Wikipedia, the perspective is gonna be this guy talks about slavery constantly, yeah, but, uh, where it's completely disproportionate to his work. But even on your show, you can tell, even not outside of the race stuff, that he's not ultra careful about, he's not, uh, Nuance. Yeah, he's not afraid to say something just like, I would say, let me just criticize him. I face it's not you, this is me. Carelessly say something controversial. Right. Like, it, I'm, I'm not saying he doesn't go, like, you know, that makes him, it's a very different thing than uh, uh, somebody who on purpose says, says something controversial stuff. Uh, like Milo Anopoulos, uh, sorry, I, I forgot, Milo, whatever yeah. his name is. Yanopoulos, yeah. Yeah, w which is really nice to see that he's a genuine person who's thoughtful, he doesn't mean to, but he just careless, carelessly seems to say things that uh, I feel like damage the rest of his body of work. It, I, I can't really speak for him, but I would guess his point is, once you're swimming in this kind of worldview, you're going to be anathema already so there's no pleasing these people. So why bother trying? Yeah, I, I think that's a deeply that's a that's a black pill way of seeing the world. It's not black pilled at all. But... Okay, it's a cynical <laughs> way. Like these people. So like it's it's saying that you're. It's a very kind of way of thinking. Like I'll say whatever I want. Whoever comes along with me. No, you just earlier said me. yourself that race racism has been weaponized as a way to shut down conversation. Yeah. So I think his perspective would be. I am so outside the mainstream in my worldview that I know I'm going to be called racism, racist. So there's no point in trying to be nuanced because I'm already going to get the scarlet letter. Yeah, I, I just disagree with that because, for example, I'm one. I am one person that he turned off. Okay. By his carelessness, and I think I should be a good target. I, I should be somebody. I think that's fair. And I'm. I'm just like. He, it's very convenient to think that there's ridiculous people out there, which there are, sure. who call everybody racist and sexist currently, and then you can't please them, so I'm, I'm not even gonna try. No, but there's like this gray area of people sure. that I don't listen to the outrage culture, or whatever, I don't, this Wikipedia article means nothing to me. Like, I, I'm not going to, Right, I got you. Uh, what I'm, I'm more, I'm just seeing this careless person, and if he's going to be careless about, uh like race like this i feel like if i walk along with him long enough i'm going to catch the carelessness i'm going to lose like i'll i'll defend your perspective better yeah. than you can yeah <laughs> this is uh, this is good i'm taking notes i talked to eric weinstein after you guys talked about me on your show pronounce weinstein 
we had a good conversation. He invited me on his show. That would be an secret. amazing conversation. And we got on the phone and his concern, fairly, he goes, I don't want you to come on my show for the purposes of clowning me. And I would never do that. Yeah, uh, it's, It would never- He might not be aware of who you, uh, of- Well, that's why he wanted to feel me out. He's yeah. like, you know, when he hears troll, it can mean a lot of different things. And I, we had a very conversation, a very much, it was very clear that that's not where the conversation would go. But I think when you are going to be on someone's show, there is a responsibility that they're not going to have to pay a cost right. for having you as their guest. So if you're if you were put off by how he wasn't that live streams or two I did, like I understand where you're coming from. I think he's very very bright, but you have a very you have a different audience than I do, and you're going for something different than than I am. No, no, like uh, in my in just uh, sense of. You wouldn't feel safe with him. Yeah, I wouldn't feel safe yeah. with him. But he's he's borderline for me. I think I th I would like to actually talk to him one day. Uh, Alex Jones is crossed the other line for me. Well, you could do what you could do with me. Tape the episode and never release it. <laughs> no, it's it's one of those things where it'll be uh, when when there's finally <laughs> they'll they'll make a <laughs> History Channel documentary about you and I and how it all went wrong, like the cult that we started and then everybody killed themselves. And uh, <laughs> there's a, a, we'll release it then because it'll be like unseen footage. This is how it started. It's, it'll be black and white <laughs> in a basement somewhere in New York. Yeah, yeah. my mother's basement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this explains so much.